everybody, it's Jman105, and I feel compelled to weigh in on some current events today. More specifically, it's one of the big pieces of news that's largely going unnoticed by a lot of the media. You mainly see more of this on American media. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail of which channel or which outlet, but I'm talking about the situation with Russia right now. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Russia has been doing a lot of saber rattling in regards to the Ukraine lately and they're also spreading themselves out and are probably going to initiate some false flag operations and if you don't know what that means, that means dummy operations to uh, take the observation off their forces near Ukraine and then mount an invasion of Ukraine because in true Russian fashion anything in their field of vision is apparently theirs. And I'm going to relay this from a Polish standpoint, because even though there's a German flag behind me, because I am half German, I'm also half Polish, and I'm a student of history, and I hate the Russians with a passion. The Russians invaded Poland too many goddamn times over the course of history. You cannot trust them. They will slaughter everybody, women and children. Don't forget about the Katyn Forest Massacre, which I usually mark every year between April and May, in which I believe it was 24 to 26,000 innocent Poles were killed in a forest in Katyn. That number could be up or down. Lawmakers, officials, priests, all unarmed, executed. That's what the Russians do, and I have a dim view when it comes to them. They need to be stopped by any means possible. And... I watched a program years ago, and I, I read about this to a certain extent, but I watched a historical program on the History Channel years ago where they were interviewing survivors of World War II in Poland, so older Polish people at that point, that were asked about the differences between the Germans and the Russians. And to their credit, these Polish people said, you know what, basically, at least you knew the Germans were coming and what they were going to do. And we charged out there as best as we could and tried to stop them, and that was that. You knew what the Germans were going to do to you because they would tell you beforehand. You knew they were going to blitzkrieg and just blow everything up, which they did. The same survivors would go on to say that the Russians, you had no clue. One day they're your friends, the next day they're invading you and slaughtering your family, or they're pretending to help you and then they turn on you, or they just do stuff behind everyone's backs, then start killing everybody randomly in mass graves. That's how the Russians operate. And a lot of people think that they really can't be stopped. Not true. You have to understand that a lot of the Russian equipment is antiquated. You also have to take into account the fact that the Poles have been eyeing and just itching for revenge for at least hundreds of years, if not longer. Do you think they're just going to sit there if Ukraine gets invaded? No. The Poles are going to rise up and probably take on the Russians themselves if they have to, whether or not they win or lose, and it's going to be messy. But that being said, Russia only stands, only understands this. They don't understand peace. They don't understand anything until you go and give them a bloody nose, beat the crap out of them, and bomb them back into the Stone Age. Is that a little brutal? Yes. Will it restore peace on this planet? Probably. Is it the best option? No. Is it necessary? 100%. The Russians won't understand anything else. And it's time that everybody got together, all the civilized nations, figured this out, and kicked their asses all the way back to Moscow. It's as simple as that. And yes, I'm opinionated on this, and as I mentioned earlier, it has a lot to do with my Polish upbringing. But, as they say in the old Polish tongue, the only good Russian is a dead Russian. So, it is what it is. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody.